and online. I am Pastor Todd. I'm the minister here at First Congregational Church. Uh, we've had a, a string of, of uh, bright, uh, sunny Sunday mornings, and so uh, now we take a turn for a little rain, which uh, our gardens and fields and flowers welcome. It's a Trinity Sunday. It's also Memorial Day weekend, and we have a wonderful worship service uh, planned around those themes today. Uh, this is also um, yet another stage in our evolution. Um, this is what uh, many, if not all, of the churches that I'm aware of are moving to uh, called uh, hybrid worship. That is uh, worship that we're doing in such a way that is engaging for both people uh, in person and online. So it's going to be different. It's not for those of you who are here in person. It's not going to be. It's not going to be what you remember from uh, from before COVID. But hopefully, it will be just as inspiring and uh, just as meaningful. Also. Um, we're in this weird sort of place uh, with, uh, with COVID and with guidelines and with masking and all of that sort of stuff. So let me just uh, take a moment to explain to you kind of my understanding of where we're at. Uh, so our uh, assistant moderator, Lisa, wrote a little piece for our newsletter explaining that our policy here in the church is going to be a lot like you know, what you'd find at the Y or other places. It's kind of what the CDC person said a few weeks ago. It's the honor system. <laughs> so if you're vaccinated, you're free not to wear, you, you don't have to wear a mask. You, you certainly may wear a mask. And if you're not vaccinated, we ask that you do uh, wear a mask uh, indoors. Additionally, because singing is a particularly kind of, it, it per spreads the virus particularly well. For now, we're going to ask that, we, we can have singing indoors, but we're going to ask that everyone, you know, that we put on the masks uh, for the singing piece uh, for now. And you can see we're, we're going to be distancing as well uh, for now. Again, just to, you know, we're all kind of, feeling our way through this thing. Does that make sense to everyone, uh, how, how we're trying to handle this? Any questions? OK, great. Our crew today uh, on the tech team is uh, Jordan. So thanks to, so much uh, for Jordan for handling uh, the tech. Uh, and our deacon is Bob Giles. And our musician is Laura Murak. Again, since Laura is, <coughs> Laura is <laughs> again, Keeping plenty of distance, uh, again, just because she's going to be uh, doing some singing and leading us in that uh, singing. Um, and for prayer time, once again, for those of you in, in Facebook land, just email me, pastor at firstchurchgramby.org, if you have any prayer requests, and I will include them. For those of you joining us in person, we have uh, prayer cards at the end of the pews that you can fill out. And... Uh, and we'll collect those uh, just prior uh, to, to, the, um, to the prayer. And uh, I think that's enough for now. Uh, we can move forward with our worship. And uh, we have a welcome video. So. Following the season of Easter and the celebration of Pentecost, the church moves into a season we call ordinary time. The color for ordinary time is green. What does the color green mean or call to mind? Growth, gardens, shady forests, summer breezes, abundance, activity, moving ahead. We meet God in ordinary time. During morning coffee, or in familiar voices, noonday heat, while in a meeting, or on a sunset walk. Worship is our daily bread, our spiritual sustenance, our connection with abundant life now and the eternal life to come. Let us turn our hearts toward God.
And uh, now uh, we'll hear some music from the Norton Hall Band. Uh, once again, a, a video, and it's a familiar song. If you'd like to sing along, uh, you may, wearing the mask. Otherwise, just uh, enjoy uh, this opening song.
Please join me in the opening prayer, and I must say, I've been standing up here for 15 months and seeing nobody and hearing only my voice. It's going to be wonderful to hear voices coming from the congregation. Please join me. God, we're grateful for your call, and we're grateful to those you've sent. We're grateful for the prophets of old. We're grateful for your words of warning and comfort. We're grateful for healers and teachers, caregivers and protectors, warriors for justice, makers of peace. We're grateful for all who gave the full measure of their devotion in service to this country and our world. Make us worthy of their sacrifice. Amen. I'm wondering if you'll join me up front here. Yeah, I'm going to set this right here. Oliver and Kit, you want to help me? Can, do you got this? Can you see this? <laughs> or maybe, let's put it this way. Okay, Oliver and Kit. Come over here. Come right over. No. Yeah, where I can see you. Okay, so um, question. Um, what's this? Um, the flag of the USA. Yeah, the flag of the USA. Yeah. And do you know what the flag represents? what it stands for? No. That is a that is a that is a tough question. It's it's a the flag is a symbol that means it's one thing that represents another thing. Right? And uh, just like say um, you know the, do you know the bat signal? Do you know Batman? Okay. And there's that, that bat signal that shines in the sky. You know that? So the bat signal, what does that stand for? Batman, right. It's one thing that stands for another thing. This is the American flag. It's one thing, and it stands for another thing. And the thing that it stands for is our country. Does that make sense? Yeah, see? It's not that hard. It's just a little. It's, it's yeah, see? So you got it. Right. So that's a symbol. The 50 stars stand for the 50 states. What else do you see? Stripes. Do you know how many stripes there are? I think seven red. Seven red and how many white? Six. six. All right, so math time. Seven plus six is? Thirteen. Ah, ha-ha. Right, right. So 13 stands for the 13 colonies. And the reason why we're talking about the flag today is because today is a holiday weekend. Do you know what holiday it is today? Memorial Day. Right. And Memorial Day, do you know what we celebrate on Memorial Day or what, what we remember? Um. It's okay if you don't. It's people who died in wars serving our country. So, and this stands for our country, so that's why we're talking about the flag. Does that make sense? Okay. So, um, so that's all I wanted for us to talk about today, is that it's part of our job as a church to remember those who sacrificed for us, okay? So that's why we're talking about the flag on this Memorial Day weekend. Does that make sense? Great. So, Kit and Oliver, will you come over here and let's pray? Do you remember how to pray? 
how to, how we fold our hands, right? And close our eyes and then say after me and the folks gathered here can say after me too, okay? Well, I'll say it together. Dear God, thank you for those who sacrificed for us. Help us to live lives worthy of their sacrifice. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Whew, that was a big help. That was a tough, tough children's sermon, but we got through it. Our scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 8. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in atten attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Stories from the Bible for the people of God. Thanks, Bob. So, my wife's grandfather, uh, Captain Burley Crane, you'll see a picture of him here, uh, was groomed to be a leader. In 1937, he entered the Army uh, ROTC program at University of Maine, where he majored in mechanical engineering. And he graduated uh, in 1941, just months before the attack on Pearl Harbor. And of course, ROTC, you know, when you've gone through that program, you, you know, part of that agreement is that you then uh, serve. Uh, and uh, so uh, Captain Crane's uh, service was to serve in World War II. Uh, so uh, Burley met his... Uh, ROTC service obligation by commanding an anti-artillery group in charge of shooting down enemy aircraft in battlefields uh, all over Europe and Northern Africa. As he was begin getting ready to ship out, uh, just before uh, he shipped out, he married Dorothy Warren. In 1945, <coughs> Burley, we called him Gramps, uh, and Dorothy settled in the small fishing village of Millbridge, Maine. Gramps could have gone anywhere. I mean, he had a college degree. Uh, he, you know, was a decorated war veteran. He could have gone anywhere and done anything. Uh, but he felt a calling to serve his hometown uh, by lifting up the rural people there 
and uh, making the economy work there. And for those of you who, some of you know uh, Washington County where, where Millbridge is, uh, some of you perhaps don't, but to this day, uh, Washington County is one of the poorest counties uh, in the country. And, uh, and that's, where, that's where Gramps decided to make his life. Burley used his uh, leadership and engineering skill, skills to revolutionize the blueberry industry in Down East, Maine. Uh, and uh, and uh, there's, uh, there's a memorial on the Barrens um, recognizing uh, his service uh, to the community. Yeah. Burley heard the call to service uh, first from his country, uh, but he didn't let his uh, service, he didn't limit the call to uh, simply the service that was done in uniform. Uh, because Burley recognized that uh, the call to service and sacrifice uh, is a call to all of us, uh, whether we wear a uniform or not. And uh, so on this Memorial Day, I guess that, that's my invitation to us, is uh, to live a life worthy of their sacrifice by following that call to service wherever we find ourselves and, uh, and whatever we find ourselves engaged in, uh, whatever we find ourselves doing, uh, we too uh, can answer that call. Uh, when, when the country called Burley, he said, send me. And, uh, and we too can answer that call today. But the story doesn't end there because uh, <laughs> The wonderful thing is that service inspires service. Uh, this is why it's so important that each of us, uh, each, of a, each of us has a vital role to play. Many people, so just uh, let's, let's continue on with the story. So many people in Millbridge and Harrington and other nearby towns looked up to Burley, to Captain Crane. He was known for mentoring young men in the community. And one of those young men, uh, happened to be uh, the, the, uh, a young man who would become my father-in-law, <laughs> Philip Grant. Let's see the next slide. Philip was raised by a single mom in a house with no electricity or indoor plumbing. Remember, this is Washington County. Philip desperately wanted to escape poverty, so after graduating high school in 1962, he decided to follow in his hero, Burley's, footsteps. And he enlisted in the Air Force. Uh, Philip Grant served two ter tours in Vietnam. He could, have, he could have ended it after the first one, but his commitment, how, I mean, that's still a puzzle to this, to this day uh, that, uh, that, that Philip went, he volunteered to go back. He didn't have to do that. Uh, and so he achieved the rank of Master Sergeant. When he returned uh, stateside, he went to college on the GI Bill. He was the first in his family to do that. And again, because of, you know, um, and uh, for that, I'm, I'm in extremely grateful that, that our military uh, did and still to, you know, still does offer a pathway out of poverty. He majored in engineering, just like his hero, uh, Captain Crane. And, of course, he was my father-in-law. He married Burley's daughter. <laughs> that, that, was, that was the level of inspiration <laughs> that Captain Crane uh, provided uh, to uh, Master Sergeant uh, Grant. Uh, so uh, Philip and uh, Betsy gave uh, Burley and Dorothy three grandchildren, and Philip made his career working as an engineer for the phone company. Um, once again, inspired by his hero's service, when the call came to Philip Grant, he too said, Send me. So here's the heartbreak part. 
neither Burley nor Philip managed to return home from the war unmarked by it. PTSD dogged uh, both of them uh, their entire lives. And of course, in preceding generations, uh, we, we didn't know as much about um, uh, that. And, and too often we lacked, uh, as, uh, as, a, as a country and as communities, uh, empathy. And uh, both Burley and uh, Philip uh, suffered uh, silently uh, and untreated uh, for their entire lives. One of the family stories is of a time Burley and Dorothy were attending a business dinner at a fancy ballroom uh, when a car backfired outside. Burley dived under the table like he was diving into a foxhole in the Italian countryside in 1944. And was there sympathy? No, the entire room laughed. And that memory stayed, stayed. Uh, that is a story that is passed down in our family of, of the laughter. Philip's trauma went much deeper. Um, so um, so my, my father-in-law had already experienced a, a traumatic childhood. Um, his uh, dad was abusive. In fact, he went to jail uh, for murder. And so that being what he was carrying into Vietnam, when he came out, he was only that much more uh, traumatized. Uh, plagued by alcoholism, he died at 52 years old um, shortly after his daughter, Nicole, and I married. Um, so my children got to meet their great-grandfather. And we were so grateful for that. Um, I'll never forget when our youngest, Olivia, was born. We, uh, uh, Gramps, uh, Burley Crane, was, was dying of cancer. And, uh, he, but he managed to sit up and uh, baby, infant Olivia, he held Olivia in his lap and he, with tears in his eyes, he just said, beautiful, beautiful. And those were the last words I ever heard him say. Um, Philip did, he did, he, my children, neither of them got to meet their grandfather. Neither one. Uh, but, uh, but we remember him because uh, his blood flows in, in their veins. In our scripture this morning, the prophet Isaiah <coughs> hears God's call and says, send me. God sent Isaiah to be God's hands and heart and voice to a people in the midst of international crisis. Okay. There's international crisis today. There was international crisis that uh, Burley and Philip responded to. There was international crisis at the time of the prophet Isaiah. Israel was, tiny Israel was caught in the middle of two great empires the Assyrians and the Egyptians. And because, and unfortunately, Israel was in conflict with itself. It had lost its way. It had forgotten God. Uh, God had given the people of Israel the same encouragements, the same commandments, the same directions uh, that God gives us today. Love each other. Take care of each other. Stop fighting and exploiting and harming each other. Listen to each other. Those were the commands to the people of Israel. Those are the commands today. But the people of Israel, they, had, they didn't see the point. 
They were focused on their own self-interest, pursuing their own wealth, regardless of the consequences. And so when Assyria and Egypt decided to invade Israel, Israel barely had the strength to resist. And so unfortunately, the people didn't listen to, <laughs> to Isaiah's message to call them back to love and healing. But the good news is we, we do have this opportunity, right? And each of us has a call. Each of us can do something. And like Burley, like Philip, we don't know what the consequences of saying yes will be. The consequence of Philip saying yes to service his, uh, his son is a prosecutor who uh, fights, uh, who, puts, who puts sex traffickers in jail and serves our country in that way. His, uh, one of his daughters is a public school teacher in a poor rural community in New Hampshire, giving those kids there hope and encouragement that uh, they too have a future for themselves. And his daughter, who I was fortunate enough, his other daughter, who I was fortunate enough to marry, is a minister right over in the next town in Windsor. Your service inspires others to service. God is calling you. The only question is, will you say, send me? And many of us are. And many of us are. So, what's next? When Gramps returned uh, from the war, he took the skills he had learned in the army and used them on behalf of his community. The crisis was over, World War II was over, but the call continued. He turned the four years he, sp in, he spent in service on the battlefield into 60 years of service in the blueberry fields and in boardrooms and in the church. He left a legacy not only for his family, but for his town and for the entire region of Down East Maine. Philip passed on a legacy of service to his children, uh, which we just talked about. So my question for us is, what lessons will we carry forward from this pandemic time? We're still not out of the woods yet, but we're getting there. The crisis may be over, but the call is not. The call is not. What have we learned? We have learned that we can continue to gather and to connect wherever. We can worship God here. We can worship God online. We can worship God outside. <laughs> we can worship God downtown. We can worship God from, you know, the other side uh, of the country. And we can continue to reach people with that message of love and healing. We can honor the sacrifice of our service members by making sacrifices of our own. Maybe we've realized how much we love and miss each other. Maybe there's a renewed commitment to being a community together and to serving our community. We've really raised our profile. The, 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 uh, the, the pandemic got us outside our walls and people noticed and appreciated the way that we were there for them. The crisis may be ending, but the call continues. Our work of bringing a message of hope and healing to our town and to our world has only just begun. So let's try um, a little singing, shall we? <laughs> you don't have to, but uh, let us... Uh, Let's sing, Take My Life, God, Let It Be. It's, uh, if you want to sing from the hymnal, 
Are there hymnals in the pews, or did we take them out? They're in there? Yeah, it's uh, 448, or you can just uh, read it from your, from your worship uh, programs. We'll, we'll get back into the, into the swing of it. Uh, once again, um, if, uh, if you have a, uh, a prayer request, uh, you can email them to me. All right. Let's pray. A God of memory, God of sacrifice, we thank you for those who have given their lives that we might live. Make us worthy of their sacrifice. Teach us to follow their example. We live too much for ourselves. We clutter our minds with petty grievances and small hurts. Teach us to appreciate what we have. Teach us to celebrate the life we've been given. Teach us to live for others. Teach us to heal our world. And we remember our world. Holy God, this morning we remember uh, uh, the, uh, the conflict in the Middle East. We're so grateful for for the uh, ceasefire, and uh, we pray uh, that uh, there might uh, be peace among uh, Palestinians and Israelis and uh, peace around our world. Closer to home, we say prayers of, uh, of gratitude and, and thanks uh, that um, uh, more and more around our country are getting vaccinated and that more and more uh, we are able to uh, gather again, uh, that uh, there are fewer and fewer infections and fewer and fewer dying. And so we are hopeful. Nevertheless, we recognize that in other parts of the world, uh, many are still being infected and dying. We pray, for example, with um, our friend, uh, a colleague, fellow clergy person here in Granby, uh, Father Carlos, uh, his uh, cousin Patrizia is, uh, has been hospitalized uh, for, uh, for COVID in Colombia and, uh, and is in uh, very uh, serious condition. And uh, we pray for Father Carlos and for the family uh, who can't uh, be with her and uh, can't be with their family. In, uh, in her time of, of need. Uh, closer to home, 
We uh, pray uh, with Heather Dobbert for a friend who is dealing with some toxic energy this weekend. Uh, for with Anne Wilhelm for her cousin Charles. Uh, prayers for Kareen and I as we make uh, the trek to Pennsylvania to pick up Kareen's new puppy. Uh, Wilson will be coming with us. That's a prayer from Lori Fontana. Okay, that sounds like a happy adventure. <laughs> prayers for safety for that. That sounds fantastic. Uh, abundance of prayers for those suffering from mental illness and all its forms. We all need uh, God's love to heal. Uh, amen to that. Uh, prayers for the life of Nancy Fisher today, the hymnal she had uh, is, is returned. Uh, and uh, so, yes, yeah, so we, we uh, continue to remember Nancy, whose memorial we had uh, earlier this month, and uh, we sorely uh, miss her presence here. Uh, we pray for our congregation, uh, First Congregational Church of Granby, as we and many other congregations transition into this uh, new time, this new form of hybrid worship as we get used to uh, gathering again together. We uh, pray that uh, we might uh, bring uh, uh, energy and joy and hope once again to this uh, space. We also pray for our uh, friends and brothers and sisters at South Church as they too are uh, going through their own process of, of regathering. And we pray for both of our congregations as we continue to talk about um, about uh, how, how we are already one, how we might be more one together, and how together we might uh, form a new congregation, a new ministry that might uh, uh, have uh, uh, impact our community in new and uh, hopeful and vibrant ways. We pray all of this with uh, the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A few announcements as uh, we uh, prepare to move on with the rest of our day. Um, we, uh, we still need money, okay? So, <laughs> so but we, we, we won't be taking, uh, like, passing the plate as we used to, but there is a basket at the door, so if you brought your offerings today, you're free to leave them. Or... Uh, as always, um, you're invited to uh, go to First, uh, Chur uh, First Church Granby. Is that firstchurchgranby.org? That's our website, right? Firstchurchgranby.org and uh, give uh, online there. Um, no Bible study tomorrow for those of you who uh, have been joining uh, for, the, for the Zoom Bible study because of Memorial Day. Um, an announcement from Marilyn Tracy as we welcome each other back to Inside Worship. Let us also welcome the presence of the Fill the Crib Project. Dun, dun, dun. Donations will be accepted today and through this week so that the serve committee can deliver the items to uh, the Maternal Infant Outreach Program office. And uh, I invite uh, uh, folks to, uh, you know, after worship, just... Uh, admire and appreciate all of the beautiful uh, handiwork from our twisted stitchers. Um, there's uh, also uh, some, you know, clothes and all of this uh, uh, love and uh, warmth and blessing goes to uh, at-risk moms and babies uh, in the Hartford area through the Maternal Infant Outreach Program. So uh, once again, you know, the Twisted Stitchers have heard the call and said, send me, and so are sending all of this love uh, out into the community. So we're so grateful for them. Um, next weekend is Communion Sunday. We have, there will be a new sort of uh, communion process. We'll all be getting individual little cups if you show up here. So it, it'll be wonderful. It'll be different, but it will be meaningful. 
And so I encourage you uh, to, to join us for worship next Sunday at uh, 10 a.m. for communion. We'll have a guest um, musician. Some of you may be familiar with Rachel Abramson, who will be here. And so she's so excited to be uh, joining and uh, sharing music with us. So I hope you'll come. Um, also next Sunday, the annual election meeting for First Congregational Church of Granby. That's us. It is called for, for Sunday, June 6 at 11.30 a.m. The purpose is to elect officers and other church leaders uh, in accordance with our Constitution and to consider such other businesses may properly come up before the meeting. And, and it's, it's going to be via Zoom. So we won't be meeting here in person at all? Okay. So what you'll do, if you want, you'll come here, worship in person, and then you'll... Well, uh, you'll go to your homes and join via Zoom so that, again, because we have a number, of, we want to try to get as many folks uh, connected as possible for that. Um, let's see. Uh, all right, so uh, GrandbyRacialReconciliation.com. Just want to make uh, a little uh, announcement for this. Uh, do, can you pull up the website or is that what you get? It's not pulling up a picture of the website. Anyway, there is a program that we're be invite being invited to as a town called Be the Bridge. It's a nine-week uh, study, uh, book study, that, and uh, we're putting together groups that are racially balanced. And so it's about building relationships and talking about racial justice together uh, with people of color and white people. It's a nine-week study. It's going to be on Zoom, or eight-week study. It will be on Zoom starting Wednesday, June 9. At, uh, it's at 7 p.m. or 7.30. 7.30, 7.30. And uh, finally, uh, for uh, our summer worship, um, we will be uh, sharing worship once again uh, with South Church. Um, beginning the middle of June through the middle of August. And the theme for the summer is stories of faith, stories of trust, and so we're looking for storytellers. We have one volunteer, Heather Dobbert, has volunteered to share a story, but we're looking for others to share your personal stories of uh, faith, stories of trust. And uh, Denny and I will work with you to uh, put those stories. And we'll, I, we'll, I will be here, I will be here to support you in telling your story, so you don't have to be afraid. Okay? All right, think about it. We have plenty of open spots left. All right, tons of other great stuff going on. Um, and so please check out your announcements. Let us um, check Todd? out your announcements in your emails. Todd, there's one more announcement. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I thank you for remind. I thank you for reminding me. We'll make sure that that gets in there. Eleven Juniper Drive. <laughs> Very good. All right, uh, let's hear uh, postlude and benediction.
We are grounded in love. God calls us to love others. We're inspired to serve. May our witness inspire others to join us in building a world of peace, justice, and provision for all.